सदाशिव सरंभा शंकराचार्य मध्यमा अस्मदाचार्य पर्यता वंदे गुरुपरंपरा सुखम नित्यम स्वप्रकाशम व्यापक नाम रूपयो अधिष्ठान बुद्ध्यबोध्यम बुद्धिर्दृग्यप्त निर्मल अपारम सर्वेदेद्य प्रत्यक्पर मह तदेवाहम न मोन्दिति मे निश्चिता मति In the last class, I completed the fourth chapter of uh, Vichara Sagara. The chapter is known as Tarangaha, Chaturtha Tarangaha Samapta. Now, today I am going to give you the summary of uh, fourth chapter. There are totally seven chapters in Vichara Sagara. First three chapters are only introductory chapters. First chapter talks about uh, Samanya Anubandha Chatushtaya, I said, which contains 39 topics totally, the first chapter. Then the second chapter also talks about uh, Anubandha Chatushtaya only, but special Anubandha Chatushtaya. This is the unique uh, presentation of Vichara Sagara. Normally we find in any text only one Anubandha Chatushtaya. But here Nishchala Dasa he has taken another special Anubandha Chatushtaya. For that he gave one particular chapter, Tarangaha, that is second chapter, which contains 69 topics. 69 topics. That means totally above 100 topics he has taken for only Hanubandha Chetushtayam and how much he is very particular about Adhikari, Vishayaha, Sambandhaha, Prayojanam, that we come to know. Then the third chapter he introduces, generally who is a Uttama Guru and what are his qualifications and who is an Adhikari, qualified student. And three types of students, Uttama Adhikari, Madhyama Adhikari and Manda Adhikari. Like that he introduced about the Guru Sishyas generally. Not any particular Guru or Sishya, but generally. To study Vedanta Shastra and to teach Vedanta Shastra, Guru Sishya Parampara he brings out. That uh, third chapter has got 13 topics, 1, 3, 13 topics. Then in this fourth chapter which we completed recently in the last class, this uh, is the very, very important chapter because the main teaching comes here and the Uttama Adhikari Sishya received teaching. This fourth chapter has got totally 104 topics, 104 topics. Three chapters have got only 100 and above topics, but one fourth chapter itself has got 104 chap topics and with seven portions. There are seven 
um, you can take uh, seven portions in this 104 topics because it is a main teaching that too uttama adhikari then uh, what are those topics now we will briefly uh, see that is um, from 122 to 126 that is uh, a story part comes introducing a story that story is uh, runs like this there was a king called Shubhasantati Shubhasantati was the king and he want to retire from his uh, kingly duties kingship duties he has got uh, three sons. Three sons were there for him and he want to give that uh, responsibilities to his three sons and he want to retire from his duties. And he called all of them, three of them. First son name is called Tattva Drishtihi. Second son name is called Adrishtihi. Third son name is called Tarkadrishtihi. Tattvadrishti is presented as Uttamadhikari in this story. And Adrishtihi is presented as Madhyamadhikari. He comes in the fifth chapter, which we are going to see later. Then the sixth chapter was uh, for that third uh, son, it is uh, Tarkadrishtihi. Tarkadrishti comes in the sixth chapter. He was considered as uh, Manda Adhikari, Kanishtha Adhikari otherwise. So fourth chapter is for Uttama Adhikari, fifth chapter is for Madhyama Adhikari, Adrishtihi. And the sixth chapter is for Tarka Drishtihi Kanishtha Adhikari. Now when their father asked to come and take up the responsibilities of the kingdom, three of them said, we are not interested in these kingly positions or king, these responsibilities of taking care of the administration or any other responsibilities of this kingdom, we don't want any power. We don't want any power, comforts, pleasures, etc., etc. They have got a lot of vairagya. Three of them have got vairagya. Very rarely happens, but wonderful. Nice to listen. Hmm? They have got vairagya. Therefore, they said to their father, Shubhasantati, is the name of their father, king. And they said to their father, Oh father, we are not interested in this kingdom. We want to go and study Vedanta. And three of them left their kingdom and went to Kashi. When they went to Kashi, they saw a guru under a banyan tree. One guru was sitting under a banyan tree. Three of them approached Tatpadrishti, Adrishti, and Tarkadrishti. Approached that guru and asked for Brahma Vidya. First, Shubhasantati, son Tatpadrishti, Uttama Adhikari, asked the guru that uh, is the topic begins here from 127 so 122 to 126 this story is introduced then that uh, upadesha was given by that guru guru name was not given therefore for our purpose convenience sake we take Nishchala Dasa as their guru, the author of Vichara Sagara. We can take him uh, as their guru. 
So Nishchala Dasa, the Guru, they have approached. Tattva Drishti asked. Nearly five questions Tattva Drishti asked. All five questions are answered in these uh, topics. Uh, one not four topics. 127 to 134 is the second topic. So first topic is uh, the story part. Then second topic onwards, topic number two, Tattva Drishti, this first question. What is that first question? How can I get Moksha? This, this was the first question Tattva Drishti asked. How can I get Moksha? How can I get freedom from uh, sorrow? That is the question. Then what Guru's answer? Nishchala Dasa gave his a brilliant answer. What is that answer? Your desire for moksha itself is wrong. Your desire for moksha itself is wrong. Therefore, you need not desire for moksha. <laughs> what an answer. Hmm? Then Tattva Drishti was looking at his guru. What he is telling? Tattva Nishchala Dasa said, the Guru answered further, because your desire is wrong to get moksha. Why I am telling? Because moksha means dukkha nivritti purvaka sukha prapti. Moksha means freedom from sorrow and attaining ananda. That is the meaning. Dukkha nivritti purvaka. Sukha praptihi, attainment of uh, happiness by relieving from, eliminating that uh, sorrow is called moksha. Because uh, moksha is nothing but freedom from sorrow. But your desire is wrong desire. The reason is, Atma is Ananda Swarupam. You never have any dukkha. You are Ananda Swarupaha. Therefore, you need not get Sukha Prapti. You need not get Sukham. Sukha Prapti is not required because you are Ananda Swarupam. Ananda Swarupam, Atma, you are. You are of the nature of Ananda which is Atma. In that Atma, there is no Dukkha at all. There is no sorrow at all. Therefore, how can you desire freedom from sorrow when you don't have sorrow? How can you desire for Ananda when you are Ananda, Swarupam? How can you desire? That is why I am telling your desire to get Moksha itself is wrong. What a brilliant answer the Guru starts his teaching. Therefore, O Tattva Drishti, you are not asking a right question. This is a wrong question. For a wrong question, right answer cannot be there. Because there is no Dukkha at all. Only Ananda Swarupam you are. You need not get Ananda. You need not eliminate sorrow because it is not there. This is the answer given by Nishcharadasa, Guru. Then from 130, this is the second topic. Okay. Then third topic is um, topic number 3, 135 to 165, Avartha. That is uh, the question, second question raised by Tattva Drishti. What was the second question? Hey Guru, how can you say I don't have sorrow? I am experiencing the sorrow. Anubhuta dukkhasya abhavaha katham. How can you say there is no sorrow? Katham uchyate dukkaha eva nasti iti katham uchyate. I am experiencing every day dukkha. Lot of sorrow is there. Therefore, I am not able to accept. Dukkha is there. 
am experiencing. Then what was the Guru's answer? Guru says, whatever you experience need not be factual. Whatever you experience need not be factual. Your sorrow that what you are experiencing also need not be fact. It need not be true. Dukkha is not there because it is Mithya. It is Mithya. What is the definition of Mithya? The technically Mithya is presented. Erroneous perception. Erroneous perception is called Adhyasa. Adhyasa, whatever you experience because of Adhyasa, that is Mithya. Mithya Tvat Dukkha Eva Nasti Dukkha Nuhutihi Api Mithya Eva Tasmat Dukkha Eva Nasti Sorrow is not there because it is Mithya. Because you are experiencing. Whatever your experience is not true. So in this chapter, the Guru introduced Khyati Vada. Khyati Vada, very famous Anirvachaniya Khyati comes. That Khyati Vada is of five types. Khyati Vada. What are those five types of Khyati Vada? First one is Atma Khyati. I am not going to explain. I am giving just names because we are seeing the summary. Atma Khyatihi, Asat Khyatihi, number two. Number three, Anyatha Khyatihi. Number four, uh, Akhyatihi. Number five, Anirvachaniya Khyatihi. So we saw elaborately all these five Khyati Vadas. Now I will give you the brief summary of Anirvachaniya Khyatihi, which is very important for understanding of our real nature. So, in this uh, Khyati Vada, uh, Anirvachaniya Khyati, how we presented there. Mithya Padartha is seemingly there, uh, figuratively there through Anirvachaniya Khyati. What is Anirvachaniya Khyati? The technically defined Mithya, Mithya is technically defined. What is that? Mithya is that which is different from existence and which is different from non-existent. Mithya is that when you see an entity which is neither existent nor non-existent. Sat Vilakshanaha, Sadhyam. Sat Asat Sat Asadhyam Vilakshanaha Sat Asadhyam Anirvachaniyaha Since uh, experientially it is there, but on inquiry it is not there, it is, therefore it is uh, unclassifiable. Uh, Anirvachaniya means what? Nirvachaniya means classifiable, categorizable. A nirvachaniyam. Na nirvachaniyam, a nirvachaniyam means unclassifiable, uncategorizable. How it is sat, it is existent, also you cannot say, you cannot classify under existent. Mithya vastu is not classified into existent entity. Or Mithya vastu you cannot uh, classify into non existent entity. Similarly, you cannot categorize that Mithya Vastu into existent entity or you cannot categorize that Mithya Vastu into non-existent category. That is why it is uncategorizable. Sat Asadhyam Vilakshanaha Anirvachani Yakhyatihi So Advaitin holds on to this Anirvachani Yakhyati that is example given by Nishchala Dasa is rope snake, our classical traditional example. Rope snake, uh, Guru establishes this rope snake is Anirvachani, comes under Anirvachani Khyati. You cannot explain 
there is a snake, rope snake. You cannot say it is not there. That is why rope is, rope snake is anirvachaniyam, unclassifiable, as existent also, nor non-existent also, you cannot classify. That is why um, he talk about uh, uh, anirvachaniya khyati is a rope snake example we take. This is normal general anirvachaniya khyati. Then we saw revised version of Anirvachaniya Khyati. Revised version of Anirvachaniya Khyati elaborately we saw <coughs> here in itself in this chapter. Now I am giving the brief uh, um, summary of this <coughs> revised version of Anirvachaniya Khyati. Snake is superimposed. Snake is superimposed. Rope itself uh, is Mithya in revised version. What we said in revised version of Anirvachaniya Khyati, snake is Mithya and the general Anirvachaniya Khyati. But in revised version it is advanced. I told that time also. Revised version of Anirvachaniya Khyati is for advanced students, senior students like you all. So rope itself is Mithya. Rope snake is another mithya. One mithya vastu cannot be superimposed upon another mithya vastu. One superimposed object, rope snake, cannot be superimposed upon the another superimposed mithya vastu that is rope. Therefore, rope is also mithya. How can you superimpose rope snake upon the uh, mithya vastu rope? Therefore, therefore what? Next step. This is first step in revised Anirvachaniya Khyati. What is the second step? In the second step, um, he says um, that um, in um, rope snake, when we are talking, it is uh, um, not, uh, there are two two possibilities are there or two aspects are there in rope experience rope snake experience there are two parts in rope snake experience rope snake and raju sarpa our raju sarpa our raju sarpa means uh, our example in that shastra snake is one part and snake knowledge is one part Snake experience. Snake knowledge means snake experience. Sarpa and Sarpa Anubhava. Two aspects are there, two parts are there, two portions are there in Raju Sarpa Jnana. Raju Sarpa, rope snake and snake and snake experience. The snake is called Arthadhyasa. Rope uh, snake is called Arthadhyasa, that rope snake experience is called Jnanadhyasa. I hope you are recollecting all this. So Arthadhyasa is superimposed on rope enclosed consciousness. Arthadhyasa or uh, snake is superimposed on rope enclosed consciousness. Raju avachinna chaitanye. Sarpa Adhyasaha. So Chaitanya is included here in revised version. Then what is Jnana Adhyasa? Jnana Adhyasa is another superimposition, superimposed on mind enclosed consciousness. Antakkarana Avachinna Chaitanya Jnana Adhyasa. Snake Anubhava. Snake Anubhava Adhyasa. So, mind avachinna chaitanya, mind enclosed consciousness. Thus, the snake imposed, superimposed, and on um, snake imp superimposed on what uh, um, upon the rope avachinna chaitanya. And uh, snake Anubhava is superimposed upon and the mind enclosed consciousness. 
snake is a rope enclosed consciousness snake experience is a mind enclosed consciousness snake is rope snake is a rope enclosed consciousness snake experience rope snake experience is mind enclosed consciousness this is the second step so the third step is mind extend mind extend thought thought goes and gets the rope snake akara that is mind extend in the form of thought mind extend in the form of thought and pervade their rope and see it as a snake and the rope snake therefore instead of saying a snake is superimposed on rope enclosed consciousness instead of saying rope snake is superimposed upon rope enclosed consciousness what we say we say uh, snake is superimposed on extended extended mind enclosed consciousness see the steps <laughs> first uh, we said uh, uh, it is superimposed upon the rope then we said no 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 it is superimposed on rope enclosed consciousness no 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 really speaking a uh, rope uh, mind extended uh, the rope enclosed consciousness that extended means thought goes and pervades that is the idea arthadhyasa is extended mind enclosed consciousness extended mind means thought going from the mind extend extended mind thought goes outside you see the snake thought extend extended mind uh, enclosed consciousness first thought consciousness envelops that gnana adhyasa means snake experience in the mind enclosed consciousness snake experience in the mind enclosed consciousness is called gnana adhyasa so artha adhyasa and gnana adhyasa so mind enclosed consciousness is called sakshi chaitanyam mind enclosed consciousness is called sakshi chaitanya therefore what final conclusion this is drishtanta all superimpositions all superimpositions consists artha adhyasa and gnana adhyasa both of them are located in the sakshi chaitanyam artha adhyasa is also located in sakshi chaitanyam gnana adhyasa is also located in sakshi chaitanyam only therefore sakshi chaitanyam is the adhisthanam substratum sakshi chaitanyam is the adhisthanam the substratum of what of artha adhyasa and gnana adhyasa sakshi chaitanyam the consciousness is the substratum of artha adhyasa superimposition number 1 and superimposition number 2 gnana adhyasa experience artha means vastu the snake is the object object adhyasa and object knowledge adhyasa <laughs> snake object and snake object knowledge both so extending this to darshtanta no no we are not interested in rope snake okay what for all this na extending this to darshtanta samsara is also consisting of artha adhyasa and gnana adhyasa you are talking about tattva drishti you are talking about samsara dukha and nivritti you are talking it is only an adhyasa only an aberration it is only false artha adhyasa and gnana adhyasa adhyasa means superimposition which is mithya therefore dukham is artha artha adhyasa dukha is saro is artha adhyasa dukha anubhava is what you can say dukha anubhava is gnana adhyasa therefore you should not desire 
to remove what sorrow. When snake is not there, it is superimposed. Are you interested in removing that rope snake? Similarly, when the dukkha is superimposed upon the adhisthanam, the consciousness, which is not fact, which is not there really, are you interested in removing that non-existent sorrow? Like our rope snake? Are you interested in removing, eliminating that non-existent sorrow? Like rope snake? Think Tattva Rushri. Therefore, your desire for removing that Dukkha is wrong. What a beautiful, brilliant answer. Now the next, uh, with this third topic is over. Now the second, fourth topic is from, so finally in simple language, the third topic essence is this. Student asked the question, Katham Anubhutaha, Anubhutaha, Dukkha Abhavaha Katham Bhavati Experiencing sorrow, how it can be unreal. Katham Anubhuta Samsaraha Samsarasya Abhavaha I am experiencing Samsara Dukkham Katham One word Guru said Mithya Tvat It is Mithya, it is unreal, it is seemingly real, figuratively it is appearing not real, it is Vithyatvat, answer, over. Now fourth topic from 166 to 188, then third question comes. What Tattva Drishti is asking, third question. Very interesting, very very interesting, Tattva Drishti asking, Hey Guru, okay, I accept Dukkha is Mithya. It is non-existent like a rope snake. Tell me, Swapna is also Mithya only. Dream is also unreal. But uh, that uh, bad dream to avoid this Swapna, are we not doing any prayers? We are uh, trying to do some prayers. This Swapna, uh, Nivaranartham, there are certain prayers. To eliminate, to avoid bad dreams, even though dreams are unreal, we are all doing some mantras chanting, prayers are there to avoid that bad unreal dreams. Like that, even though samsara is unreal, like a dream, it is not uh, real, it is mithya, still, still like swapna nivaranartham, just like we do prayers, tell me some technique, some method. How to remove this? How to eliminate Mithya Samsara? Previously he asked how to remove Samsara. Now he is asking how to remove Mithya Samsara. How to remove Mithya Samsara like a bad dream. To avoid we do prayers like that. Please tell me. I should not uh, get uh, Dushwapna, I should not get Mithya Samsara problem also. Dushwapna is giving problem. Bad dreams are giving nightmare, giving problems. Like that, uh, this uh, Mithya Samsara also should not cause any Dukkha. From that Mithya Samsara Dukkha Nivrityartham Kim Karaniyam Katham Bhavati Mithya Samsara Sya Nivrityhi Katham Bhavati he has, has added Mithya, that's all. Now Guru has to give answer. What Guru says? Guru said, it goes through Jnanam, only through knowledge. So that uh, Mithya Vastu is eliminated by Mithyatva Nishchaya Dwara. Mithyatva Nishchaya is figuratively uh, eliminates. Elimination is a figuration, figuratively said. No real elimination. Mithya samsarasya nivrittihi mithyatva nischaya jnanena bhavati. By falsification of mithya samsara, falsification of mithya samsara through jnanam, that is possible. That is called anirvachaniya khyatihi. When Guru Sishya said, Brahma Satyam Jagan Mithya, 
ಜಗನ್ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಯಲ್ ಯು ಆರ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ವರ್ಲ್ಡ್ ಈಸ್ ಅನ್ರಿಯಲ್ ಗುರು ಸೇಡ್ ಹೇ ಗುರು ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ದ ಫಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಸೆಕೆಂಡ್ ಲೈನ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಸತ್ಯಂ ದ ವರ್ಡ್ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ಜಗನ್ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಐ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟುಡ್ ನೌ ಟೆಲ್ ಮಿ ಟೆಲ್ ಮಿ ಜೀವೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೈವ ನಾಪರ ಹೌ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ಜೀವ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಏವ ನೆಕ್ಸ್ಟ್ ಲೈನ್ ಜೀವೋ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮೈವ ನಾಪರ ಹೌ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಐದು ಜೀವ ಆಮ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮನ್ ಹೌ ಟು ಅಂಡರ್ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ದಿಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದ ಕ್ವಶನ್ ರೇಸ್ಡ್ ಬೈ ತತ್ವದೃಷ್ಟಿ ಸೊ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಪಂಚದಶಿ ನಿಶ್ಚಲದಾಸ ಬಾರೋ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ತ್ ಚಾಪ್ಟರ್ ಪಂಚದಶಿ ಹಿ ಬಾರೋಸ್ ಚಿತ್ ಚಾತುರ್ವಿದ್ಯ ಪ್ರಕ್ರಿಯ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಒನ್ ಸಿಕ್ಸ್ಟಿ ಏಟ್ ಟು ಒನ್ ಏಯ್ಟಿ ಏಯ್ಟ್ ಹಿ ಟಾಕ್ಸ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಚಿತ್ ಚಾತುರ್ವಿದ್ಯ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಫೋರ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಕಾಶ ಹೀಗೆ ಟೇಕ್ಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ದೆನ್ ಫೋರ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂ ಹಿ ಇಂಟ್ರೊಡ್ಯೂಸಸ್ ಹೌ ಟು ಹೌ ಟು ಗೆಟ್ ದಟ್ ಮಿಥ್ಯಾತ್ಮ ಜ್ಞಾನ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಹೌ ಟು ಸೇ ಐ ಆಮ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಇವ ಜೀವ ಅಹಂ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಇವ ಹೌ ಟು ಸೇ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ಮ್ಯಾನರ್ ವಾಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾನರ್ ದೇರ್ ಆರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಟೈಪ್ಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಆಕಾಶ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಘಟಾಕಾಶ ಪಾಟ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಅನದರ್ ಈ ಜಲಾಕಾಶ ವಾಟರ್ ಎನ್ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ಡ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಅನದರ್ ಈಸ್ ಥರ್ಡ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಮಹಾಕಾಶ ಟೋಟಲ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಫೋರ್ತ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಮೇಘಾಕಾಶ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ ಎನ್ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ಡ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಫೋರ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸಸ್ ಆರ್ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ಅಮಾಂಗ್ ದೀಸ್ ಫೋರ್ ಘಟಾಕಾಶ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮಹಾಕಾಶ ಬೋತ್ ಕಮಂಡರ್ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ವೆರ್ ಆ ಜಲಾಕಾಶ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಮೇಘಾಕಾಶ ಬೋತ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಜಲಾಕಾಶ ಎಟ್ ಮೈಕ್ರೋ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಮೇಘಾಕಾಶ ಎಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ರೋ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಬೋತ್ ಆಫ್ ದೆಮ್ ಕಮ್ ಅಂಡರ್ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಇನ್ ವಾಟರ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಈಸ್ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ಮೇಘ ವಾಟರ್ ಬೇರಿಂಗ್ ಕ್ಲೌಡ್ಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಇನ್ ದ್ಯಾಟ್ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಷನ್ ಆಫ್ ದ ಸ್ಪೇಸ್ ಈಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಸಿಮಿಲರ್ಲಿ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದಿಸ್ ಎಕ್ಸಾಂಪಲ್ ಅಪ್ಲೈ ಟು ಚೈತನ್ಯಂ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂ ಇಸ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಡಿವೈಡೆಡ್ ಇಂಟು ಫೋರ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವರ್ ಯು ಕೆನ್ ನಾಟ್ ಡಿವೈಡ್ ಆಸ್ ಇಟ್ ವರ್ ಇಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಡಿವೈಡೆಡ್ ವಾಟ್ ಆರ್ ದೋಸ್ ಫೋರ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂಸ್ ನಂಬರ್ ಒನ್ ಈಸ್ ಕೂಟಸ್ಥ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂ ನಂಬರ್ ಟು ಈಸ್ ಜೀವ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂ ನಂಬರ್ ತ್ರೀ ಈಸ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂ ನಂಬರ್ ಫೋರ್ ಈಸ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ನಾವು ಕೂಟಸ್ಥ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂ ಬೋತ್ ಆರ್ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂ ಒನ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಕೂಟಸ್ಥ ಮೀನ್ಸ್ ಬಾಡಿ ಎನ್ಕ್ಲೋಸ್ಡ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಉಪಾಧಿ ಸಹಿತ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಕೂಟಸ್ಥ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಘಟಾಕಾಶ ಓಕೆ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಮಹಾಕಾಶ ಬ್ರಹ್ಮ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಬೋತ್ ಆರ್ ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಓಸಿ ದೆನ್ ಜೀವ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಬೋತ್ ಆರ್ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇ ಕಮ್ ಅಂಡ್ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದಟ್ ಈಸ್ ಜೀವ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಈಸ್ ಇನ್ ದಟ್ ಕಾರಣ ಶರೀರಂ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ಕಾರಣ ಶರೀರಂ ಮೈಕ್ರೋ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಆ್ಯಂಡ್ ರಿಫ್ಲೆಕ್ಟೆಡ್ ಕಾನ್ಷಿಯಸ್ನೆಸ್ ಇನ್ ಮಾಯಾ ಈಸ್ ಈಶ್ವರ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮೈಕ್ರೋ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಮೈಕ್ರೋ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಕಾರಣ ಶರೀರ ಅವಚ್ಛಿನ್ನ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಅಟ್ ಮ್ಯಾಕ್ರೋ ಲೆವೆಲ್ ಮಾಯಾ ಅವಚ್ಛಿನ್ನ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ಸೊ ಫೋರ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂಸ್ ವಿ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಗಾಟ್ ಟು ಒರಿಜಿನಲ್ ಚೈತನ್ಯಂಸ್ ದ
omniscient, omnipotent, all pervading. Hmm? Therefore, attributes are all highly superior. But in Jiva Chaitanyam, RC has got uh, all na, alpicient, na, alpipotent, uh, pervasient. Alpipotent, alpicient means less pervasive Jiva with uh, inferior attributes. So, Aikyam is not possible. If you see Vachyartha of Jiva and Ishvara, Jivo Brahmaiva na Paraha means we cannot say Jiva and uh, Ishvara both are one and the same. I am God, you cannot say from the standpoint of attributes. Vachyartha Jiva Ishvara Aikyam can never happen. Then what Aikyam is possible in Lakshartha Drishtya? Lakshartha Drishtya implied meaning you have to take Bhagat Yaga Lakshanaya. You have to drop uh, Jiva attributes, you have to drop Ishvara attributes, inferior attributes of Jiva, superior attributes of Ishvara. You have to drop Tyagaha, renounce. Then you go to Lakshartha, Chaitanyam only remain. Kutastha Chaitanyam, Brahma Chaitanyam alone remain. You can happily have Aikyam. As it were, Aikyam also within inverted commas. Aikyam. This is the fourth topic. Over. Now comes to the fifth topic. From 189 to 198. 189, 198. In these topics, again, Sattva Drishti asked a question. What is that question? Wonderful teaching. Hey Guru, nice teaching you have given to me. Lakshartha, Bhagatyaga Lakshana, wonderful. Now tell me who gains this Aham Brahmasmi Jnanam? Who gains Aham Brahmasmi Jnanam? Then for that uh, Acharya Guru Nishaladasa gives uh, seven stages. To attain Aham Brahmasmi Jnanam, seven stages, Sapta Avasthas. Sapta Avasthas, number one is Ajnana Avastha. So you have to travel from Ajnana Avastha to Vikshepa Avastha is number, Avarana Avastha number two. Ajnana Avastha, Avastha number one. Avastha number two is Avarana. Avastha number three is Vikshepa. Avastha number four is Paroksha Jnanam. Avastha number five is Aparoksha Jnanam. Avastha number 6 is Dukkha Nivritti. Avastha number 7 is Sukha Prapti. Sapta Avasthas. Now, Nishaladasa says, whenever you say I, the Jiva, it is a, I refers to, I means non. I, I am, I refers to RC also sometimes. I refers to OC also sometimes. Uh, I can refer to Jiva also, I refer to Osi Kutastha also, or I refer to Brahma Chaitanyam also. How Jiva RC claims Osi? That is the question. How I the Jiva RC, reflected consciousness, RC also I am sometimes. How can I claim RC? I am as Osi. I am RC, reflected consciousness, I am OC. How? How is it possible? For that Acharya gives the answer, whenever the word I refers to RC, suppose, if you think RC, I am, that is also there, OC is also there. So I means refers to RC suppose you have to take Badhayam Samanadhi Karanyam. Mahavakya you have to look at it as Badhayam Samanadhi Karanyam. What do you mean by Badhayam Samanadhi Karanyam? Very interesting portion. Jiva Mithyatva Nirnayaha. Jiva Hood. Mithyatva Nishchaya. Jiva Chaitanyam. That Chaitanyam is Satyam. Jiva Hood is Mithya. Jiva Mithyatva Nirnaya Rupa Mahavakyam Eva 
बाधायाम सामानाधि करण्यम सपोज इफ आई टेक आई मीन्स ओ सी आई मीन्स ओ सी इट रिफर्स टू कूटस्थ चैतन्यम आर ब्रह्म चैतन्यम देन वाट सामानाधि करण्यम ऐक्य सामानाधि करण्यम यू हैव टू टेक इफ यू टेक आर सी एज युअर सेल्फ देर मिथ्यात्म निर्णय जीवस्य मिथ्यात्म निर्णय इफ यू टेक ऐ एज ओ सी ओरिजिनल कॉन्शियस्नेस देन ऐक्य सामानाधि करण्यम कूटस्थ चैतन्यम ओ सी ब्रह्म चैतन्यम ओ सी वन एंड द सेम दट इज ऐक्य सामानाधि करण्यम पॉसिबल नौ दिक्कत टापिक इज वन नाइंटी नाइन टू वन टू हंड्रेड एंड एटीन सिक्स्थ टॉपिक दैट ऑल आर इंसिडेंटल टॉपिक्स हियर इंसिडेंटल पोर्शंस आर गिवन प्रासंगिक प्रसंगवशा सर्टन टॉपिक्स ही इंट्रड्यूस हियर वृत्ति व्याप्ति फल व्याप्ति वन टॉपिक एंड वृत्ति रिवील्स ही सेट देयर वृत्ति रिवील्स इग्नोरेंस एंड वृत्ति व्याप्ति वृत्ति प्रतिबिंबत चैतन्यम रिवील्स दैट ऑब्जेक्ट वृत्ति प्रतिबिंबित चैतन्य रिवील्स द ऑब्जेक्ट वृत्ति रिवील्स द इग्नोरेंस सो वृत्ति व्याप्ति फल व्याप्ति सो देयर सिक्स प्रमाणम ही टॉक्ड अबाउट सो द सेकेंड जनरल टॉपिक प्रासंगिक नेक्स्ट अनदर इंफॉर्मेशन सिक दट ईज इंसिडेंटल सेकेंड टॉपिक इज जनरल टॉपिक इज सिक्स प्रमाणम्स ही इंट्रड्यूस्ड व्हाट आर दो सिक्स प्रमाणम्स वी नो प्रत्यक्ष अनुमान उपमान अर्थापत्ति अनुपलब्धि शब्द सिक्स प्रमाणम्स दिस इज अनदर जनरल टॉपिक सो थर्ड टॉपिक इज ही इंट्रड्यूस्ड चतुर्विध चैतन्य four types of consciousnesses he introduced from different angles he introduced what are they pramatra chaitanyam number 1 number 2 pramana chaitanyam number 3 prameya chaitanyam number 4 prama chaitanyam so four chaitanyams in english we say प्रमात्र चैतन्य मीन्स नोवर कॉन्शियस्नेस नोवर कॉन्शियस्नेस मीन्स कॉन्शियस्नेस एनक्लोज इन द मैंड नोवर कॉन्शियस्नेस आर प्रमात्र चैतन्य मीन्स कॉन्शियस्नेस एनक्लोज इन द मैंड नंबर टू इंस्ट्रूमेंटल प्रमाण चैतन्य मीन्स इंस्ट्रूमेंट दट ईज नोन Known in knowing instrument, knowing instrument means what here? Consciousness associated with outgoing thought. Consciousness associated with outgoing thought. Thought is the instrument. Vritti is the instrument. Pramana. Therefore, thought outgoing. consciousness associated with the thought which is outgoing that is called pramana chaitanya next third one is known prameya chaitanya known means vishayakara vritti prameya chaitanya once thought goes out that thought avachinna chaitanya envelops the object and will of the object that object is enveloped by consciousness it gets the shape of that object so that is vishayakara vritti that is called prameya chaitanyam chaitanyam which is enveloping that vishaya object is called vishayakara vritti roopa chaitanyam is called prameya chaitanyam prameya means object प्रमेय चैतन्य नेक्स्ट वन इज प्रमा चैतन्य नॉलेज प्रमा मीन्स नॉलेज वाट इट मीन्स चैतन्य द कॉन्शियस्ने थाट एनविलप्ड चैतन्य इज काल फल व्याप्ति थाट एनविलप्स चैतन्य एनविलप्ड चैतन्य इज काल 
फलम व्याप्ति ही फलम इज नॉलेज दट नॉलेज फलम व्याप्ति ही दिस इज अबाउट वाट ऑल डाइवर्शन प्रमाण सिक्स प्रमाण फोर चैतन्य से इंट्रड्यूस then tattva drishti comes with another question in the sixth seventh topic last portion here only nischala dasa introduced avacheda vada and abhasa vada avacheda vada means enclosed consciousness abhasa vada means a reflected consciousness pratibimba chaitanyam avachinna chaitanyam pratibimba chaitanyam so there are some people who prefer avacheda vada there are some philosophers who prefer abhasa vada so nischala dasa says abhasa vada is ideal vada better he says so pratyaksha gnana now next question for tattva drishti asked last question pratyaksha gnanam is not possible with regard to brahman pratyaksha direct knowledge is not possible why indri agocharatvat pratyaksha gnanam is possible only through sense organs contacting the sense object brahman is ashabdam asrupam arasam agandham so sense organs cannot reach brahman indri agocharatvat direct knowledge of brahman is not possible brahmanah indriya अगोचरवात् ब्रह्मण परोक्ष ज्ञान अलोन इज पासीबल इंडैरेक्ट नॉलेज अलोन इज पासीबल बट वाट वी से प्रत्यक्ष ज्ञान इज पासीबल वी से प्रत्यक्ष ज्ञान अलोन इज कॉल अपरोक्ष ज्ञान अपरोक्ष ज्ञान डैरेक्ट नॉलेज ब्रह्मण इज पासीबल वाट इज द आंसर निश्चल दास गिवस् प्रत्यक्ष ज्ञान इज ऑफ थ्री टाइप्स हे तत्वदृष्टि इंद्रिय जन्य प्रत्यक्ष ज्ञान ओके वन टाइप ऑफ प्रत्यक्ष ज्ञान डायरेक्ट नॉलेज इज पॉसिबल थ्रू शब्द शाब्दजन्य प्रत्यक्ष ज्ञान एंड साक्षि प्रत्यक्ष प्रत्यक्ष ज्ञान साक्षि प्रत्यक्ष ज्ञान इज पॉसिबल देर फॉर ब्रह्म ज्ञान इज possible through shabda janya gnanam that shabda is mahavakya so shabda that is mahavakya gnana vritti takes place mahavakya tattvam asi when guru says gnana vishaya sambandhah gnana vritti tattvam asi shabda enters the student's mind that shabda generate thought gnana vritti that vritti because brahman happens to be my real nature it is not outside therefore brahman as awareness pratyaksham here itself so that is gnana vishaya sambandha eva pratyaksha gnanam here so tattvamasi gurus teaching what shishya has to say aham brahma asmi shishya recognizes through like dashamah tvamasi aham dashamah asmi gnana like that here also shabda pratyaksha gnanam alone possible shabda aparoksha gnanam or pratyaksha gnanam means what here shabda pratyaksha gnanam means what here knowing brahman means claiming brahman i am brahman knowing brahman means not as an object but as i the subject knowing brahman means claiming i am brahman not as an object i know brahman i never know brahman as an object i am brahman without objectification is possible what is possible i am brahman knowledge is possible without objectification so mithya mithyatva nischayam has taken mithya samsara is 
falsified through Shabda Pratyaksha Jnanam. Shabda Pratyaksha Jnanam. Mithya Samsara Nivrittihi. Mithya Samsara is eliminated through Shabda Pratyaksha Jnanam. Therefore, Brahma Jnanam is Aparoksha Jnanam only. Brahma Jnanam is Pratyaksha Jnanam only, not Paroksha Jnanam. Because Shabda Janya Jnanam gives Pratyaksha Jnanam like Dasha Mahatvamasi. But like that. With this, uh, all the seven topics are over. In these one not four portions are there. Uh, one not four topics uh, and uh, seven portions is divided. Chatur Vidya Prakriya, um, Abhasa Vada Vacheda Vada explanation and Khyati Vada. In that Anirvachaniya Khyati we have elaborately seen. So very very important portion and you can revise again and again and assimilate this teaching. Now the sixth chapter, I'm sorry, fifth chapter uh, by God's grace, Guru's grace, hmm, um, Atma Krupa, Guru Krupa, Ishwar Krupa, Shastramata Krupa, we have completed four chapters. Fourth chapter is the um, most important elaborate uh, big chapter we have completed by all these four kripas. <laughs> now we are going to see the fifth chapter, fifth chapter Panchama Tarangaha. Teacher is same, Nishchala Dasa alone is the teacher and uh, Sishya will change. Uttama Adhikari, teaching was over, Uttama Adhikari left. Hmm? Tatpadrishti left saying goodbye. <laughs> Aham Brahmasmi. He has understood. There is Madhyama Adhikari. Madhyama Adhikari is a mediocre student. Sikh Guru has to teach. And for that Nishala Dasa is going to uh, start fifth chapter in the next class. Om Purnamada Purnamidam Purnat Purnamudachate Purnasya Purnamadaya Purnameva Vasishyate Om Shanti 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 Harihi Om Shri Guru Bhyo Namaha Harihi Om